What up, tubers? Welcome back to another draft here on Arena. Thanks for watching. Hit that like and subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to check out cardkingdom.com slash newmot for all your magic card needs. Some more prep here for the upcoming Arena Open, Murders at Karlov Manor. This is going to be a best of three draft. So, quote unquote, real magic as uh, I can now sit on my rank, hopefully, for the rest of the season. Let's first pick this Detective Satchel, I think, out of this pack. A rare, not very good, and sadly only one rare opened. Other good cards in this pack, there aren't too many. I do like the Bloomkin. I found that to be a pretty solid disguise creature with some nice value, but I think Satchel here is the easy pickup. Um, yeah, lots of value with this card. It is a little bit slow initially, but it does build up and get you a lot of card advantage if you can stay alive. And yeah, let's just follow that up with, I think, a Gadget Technician. This is my favorite of the um, common disguised creatures that uh, make a creature. There are a few of them that do so, Dog Walker being another one here in the pack. Dog Walker, in general, might be better than Technician, but I think Technician is preferable here for me, after, especially after taking Satchel. Because this card is still really good when you can cast it on turn four, right? You curve out, you play a two drop, a face down card, and then like turn four, Technician, instead of disguising it. Still very good. Uh, Inspector's Dece. Trophy's fine if you're already in green-black, but this is not like an early pickup or anything. Yeah, I like going Technician following the Satchel. Ooh, okay. And now I can take a third pick, uh, Case of the Filched Falcon. That is excellent with what we already have. I think a lot of times this gets played in decks that cannot generate enough artifacts to really utilize it. If you cannot solve this case, it is pretty bad, right? One mana for just a clue, generally not worthwhile, but the potential to make a 4-4 flying kind of good. Servitor has been really, really awkward. Um, I'm not going to take it. I think the card is okay. But for the most part, well, first and foremost, it's in black, which is the worst color anyway. Yeah, let's go with the filch. Mm, wow. A lot of good cards. There is one okay playable, and I, I hate to say it, it is the red herring for us. But get a, get a leg up is one of the best combat tricks in the format. It is just so cheap, and uh, oftentimes can lead to a plus five, plus five or greater. Kind of crazy. Sample collector is decent. Cadaver's okay. You really need to have the clue synergies for it. It works really nicely with the um, chalk outline, I think it's called. That's a really good combo. Juggler's good. Sentry's good. Extract is good. Yep, I think we're just going to stick with our guns. <laughs> we're not going to pick a Kylox, though. There was that one draft uh, a couple days ago where we saw literally three Kylox, maybe even four. Seven mana for a 4-4 Menace Ward 2 Haste with a pretty weak ability is uh, not where you want to be. Here we have Fey Flight, Dramatic Accusation, Scene of the Crimes, okay. There's another black removal spell here. I tend to think that Fey Flight's actually pretty good. The fact that it permanently gives flying as well. This is probably one of those cards that I like more than most people, and it's probably not as good as I give it credit for, but I'm going to take it anyways. Well, there's another good pack. Some nice blue and red options here. Could even take the uh, Flotsam Jetsam. The jet side of this Sam is really solid, I think. Because, again, it doesn't just target cards that are milled this way, like a lot of these type of cards would. No, this, mill, this can cast any of the cards in your opponent's graveyard already there. Now, that being said, is that where we want to take here? Because I think I want to take another red herring and just go, like, uber aggro nonsense. There's Hustle Bustle now. I don't like this card. I know the Bustle side of things is fine, but... I mean, maybe I give this a chance. The only thing is we have two perfectly good, well, even three perfectly good players bulls here. We have the Branch Disguise, the Crocodile Disguise, and an Unauthorized Exit. Like, I feel like our deck would rather have the Exit here when I already have two Red Herring, you know? This is a really good case of the Filched Falcon already. We only have two non-artifact cards, the Fae Flight and the Exit, since the uh, Technician does make an artifact. 
when it's flipped or ETBs. Eh, another card I'm not like particularly fond of, but it's totally reasonable. Demand answers. I think there are better things to be doing on turn two, and later on in the game there are, I think, better card draw effects, but we'll see. Uh, was there anything in my initial pack that I could wheel? I don't think so, right? The pack had, like, Satchel and a bunch of garbage. Pretty sure it was Satchel and a bunch of garbage. We'll see when we get past it. So yeah, for the Arena Open, as usual, it is still limited. Oh, I take that back. We did get something. We got a rare, <laughs> which is 20 gems. There is also a magnifying glass here, which honestly is not a terrible pick, uh, because if you get the glass and the thinking cap and then the uh, uncommon flyer, it's not that bad. But Branch of Vitugazi. Uh, like I was saying, it'll be day one sealed. And you can play sealed as many times as you want, or rather you can try as many times as you want on day one of the Arena Open. Day two will be best of three draft, where you have to get three or four wins. If you do, you qualify for a secondary draft. Okay, bunch of garbage on the wheel. That's a good start. With double herring, we really want to get some tricks or some more ways to interact early. I still do not like herring. For the record. Hey, 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 that's a nice one. Affectionately, I call this card the Flippy Doo Doo. It's just really easy to burn your opponent out from nowhere if they cannot kill this. Like, if you flip it itself, that's already three damage, you know? And then a couple more flip cards. Generally, they're going to be doing at least three damage a piece. Card does work. Granite Witness is good here. Orangutan would be good here. Burden of Proof solid as well. Let's take the Offender at large at second pick over the Archive, I think. This has been a really good disguised creature. I probably didn't get it, give it enough uh, love at the beginning of the format, but it's a big body and the disguise is really relevant. It's, it's kind of nice with all of our herring and whatnot, right? Allowing our smaller creatures to effectively trade up. Tronesmith. Do we have any synergy for that right now? No. But it, this is a good deck for this card. Oh, no, no, we do have synergy. We have the Satchel, right. So I will have to make sure if we have the Satchel plus the Dronesmith going on, I have to hold priority. Otherwise, I have a feeling that um, at the end of my turn, when the token sacrifices... It'll just pass turn and not give me a chance to activate the satchel. Ah, oh, this is great. Continuing the this is great, Lamplight Phoenix is just a really annoying threat. 3-3 three, three flyer for 3, already great in limited terms. Um, and then yeah, if it dies, you can continuously bring it back if you have enough fodder in the graveyard isn't too hard to do. Out cold, automaton, sewer, even reasonable doubt is not unreasonable. I think I want to take the two drop creature here, especially since it's an artifact overtaking out cold. But this is the perfect deck for out cold. In fact, I'd probably run two of these. I just think it's a little bit more important to get the initial threats plus slash creatures first. Could that give us our what fourth two drop? So we already have a couple rares, but we don't have any like true bombs, I would say. It would be kind of nice to get like the big fat, is it a Hellkite? What's that 6-6 six, six dragon called? Or it's a good blue bomb. Um, ooh, a dull second satchel, hello. Because uh, like while commons and uncommons can certainly win, this is a format that has so many rares and mythics that if you don't have one, or two. Sometimes you can just lose to one. This is fantastic. So, Prime Novelist with two satchels, a drone smith, two red herrings. 
yeah, that is that is a nice pickup. A lot of decks do not utilize the Crime Novelist very well, but this is the deck for it, and we have the correct cards for it already as well. So good, 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 good. Feeling nice. What's our best curve out here? Like turn two Herring, turn three Novelist, turn four Drone Smith or something. And there's another Technician. Love it. Probably would play as many of these as I can pick up. Thinking cap with... Oh, I have no detectives right now. Surprisingly. So how many artifacts do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Orangutan looks good here. So does Burden of Proof. Ah, uh, I think I need to take the Burden of Proof though, since again, I don't have much interaction right now. So this will act as a removal spell for us since we don't have any detectives of our own to pump up. So kind of a removal spell, a bounce spell. But right now we just have a good curve with good pressure. Let's take the Smuggler here. We will often want to just cast this on turn two if we have access to it on turn two. But of course it's fine as a disguise if we have the time slash mana. Do we want any of these? Maybe the hotshot? A lot of the top end blue cards I don't think are very good. Six mana for a 4-4 four four in this format kind of feels bad. That was nice though. Another offender at large. And then there's that like five mana 4-5 merfolk that draws cards if you sacrifice artifacts. That one I think is okay. Five toughness is actually really strong in the format, and five mana is like fine. Basically, where you would want that. Damn it! Ah, I've only seen this in draft like once, and similarly, I was not playing green at the time. Stupid, sexy, crashing footfalls here. Yeah, if you're playing green, eh, you take that card. Lots of good red and blue options for us. Uh, surveillance monitor doesn't look too good. I don't have what very much collect evidence. Just the uh, it is good with the phoenix. Just the phoenix. But if you're returning your phoenix, you're probably doing okay anyways. So I might just take the code breaker here. Sometimes you cast this on turn two. Sometimes you disguise it. I'm losing a cold case cracker. That's fine. Technician maybe wheels. This is a. Very good pack. This card, not so good. We're not going to take Reenact the Crime. Push Pull with only access to Pull gets a lot worse, but I still think Pull is a fantastic card. Fuss and Bother is probably going to be my choice over Orangutan or Sprite. I think this deck can utilize both modes very well, right? Card's been impressive for me. Hmm. Braggart versus nothing. Do we want to take a Braggart here? I'm just going to take 20 gems. Oh, oh! Fourth pick, Ezram. I was like, slightly taking a peek at my white cards in the sideboard and seeing if maybe we could make that work, but... We're not going to. And we have good options here anyways. I think a second drone smith's really nice, even though we lose a suspicious detonation. Just because I have two satchels and the crime novelist now, just a free way to sacrifice seems really, really good, you know? Pick four, Ezram. Pick five, Ezram. But it's pack three, so of course nobody could take them. Because nobody was in blue-white, apparently. Curious Inquiry versus Granite Witness. Holy smokes. This is a good Curious Inquiry deck, but... Uh, 
Wow. Somebody is... I mean, actually, I take that back. Maybe nobody is going to have a good time. Dang, now I kind of wish I had taken the Granite Witness since we're getting a second Curious Inquiry here. I wonder if a second Fae Flight is just better for us. Probably is. Although I have a lot of flyers. Don't I? Double Satchel, Double Technician, Phoenix, Fae Flight gives flying. Case of the Filch Flack, Falcon makes a flyer. Crazy. Crazy, disgusting, no good feelings, but what can you do? This is another fun one, Coveted Falcon. I don't have the combo card with it. Uh, what is it called? Prof's Eidetic Mem Memory. But like this holds Curious Inquiry pretty well. I guess Concealed Weapon is really good here too. Actually, I'm going to take the Concealed Weapon. We have too many tokens to not take that. And then I could just cut one of the Fey Flights. Yeah, with like double satchel. Turning one of our random one power flyers into a four power flyer. Kind of disgusting. Wow, look at this pick eight. Cornered Crook and Galvanize. I'm going to go for power level here. And we're going to take the Crook. But the Galvanize would have been insane too. Technician wheeling. Okay. I can make a few cuts now. Um... Smuggler's probably filler. One more cut. Bounce, maybe? No, I guess I don't need the Fae Flight. There's the Orangutan, too. That's a good sideboard card. I mean, realistically, in our deck, this is just a good card to play. Sheesh. It feels like our colors were open, right? Sadly, the bombs that were opened were just simply in blue-white and not blue-red. Because we were wheeling technicians and stuff. I mean, we saw some very late red cards as well. So, I don't think we were in a bad lane. It just happened to be that blue-white was a more bombier open lane. If that makes sense. Alright, let's make some cuts here. How are all my creatures? I think good. Uh... Gosh, I kind of want to cut the red herring now, but I don't have enough other two drops. So I think I need them. We're not cutting either of these. I don't think I cut offenders in this deck either. Maybe I leave orangutan for the sideboard. I guess I don't really want to blow up my own. Well, that's just so good with double drone smith though. It's free to sacrifice the drones. It's probably got to be some number of spells down here that I'm cutting. Ah, this is kind of tough. They're all so good. My deck's just too good. Too good to cut anything. I guess since we picked up Concealed Weapon, maybe one of the Offenders at large can be cut. And then I probably just need to cut one of these things down here. Let's double check this case. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, we just have so many artifacts. The case is actually really good. Maybe I have enough artifacts that Curious Inquiry is not actually necessary then. Yeah, I can probably just cut the Curious Inquiry. And I don't think I'm going to run the branch as a... Well, actually, no, that's fine. 
We can run 17 lands, one of them being the branch. Deck looks good. Let's submit this, and uh, we will go to round one here of this best of three murders at Karlov Manor draft. Oh god, immersion ruined. Went to the gym, took a shower, changed clothes. Let's jump into our first round. Got a decent looking hand, would love a two drop creature, but Novelist into a satchel seems pretty nice. Uh, hmm. I guess I also need to hit another land if possible. They're gonna hit me with the leech for three on turn two, mill themselves a couple cards, all right. Can't say that red herring was exactly what we were hoping to draw. Yeah, I just need to hit a fourth land. If we can hit a fourth land, I think we'll be sitting pretty good. All right, all of their collect evidence is starting to get turned online. Damn it. That is really unfortunate. Okay, well, let's just go face down card and pass. Uh, it is a Night Drinker Morowai. They cannot pump their leech. I think that might have just been a mistake there. Okay, we'll take it. I mean, yeah, let's attack for three and play out the satchel. We can shrink the Moro Eye. Oh, they can blow up my satchel with that. Wow, brutal. That doesn't matter so much. We can get rid of our herring. Okay, gonna need to play a little bit defensively now. But we can do some good stuff this turn, right? Flip this, draw a card, add a red. Good. Let's see. I think I'm just going to pass now and hold up some tricky tricks. Attack all again? That does not bode well. What could this be? I guess I'm just going to make the obvious blocks for now and say, what do you have? If they pass priority, I think going to four is fine. Uh, that's not too bad. Toxic analysis. That is kind of bad. Damn it. All right, so let's float. And then I guess burden of proof, the moral wide only take one damage. I mean, at the end of the day, this actually isn't, again, that bad. They're left with two 1-1s. One -ones. The most annoying thing is that they have a couple of clues left over still. So let's just face up this technician so we can hold up Fey Flight. And say go. That was some really good early pressure from them. Yeah, I'll trade. I lose my artifact for Crook, but we have another in the form of this second technician, so that's fine. Guess we go face down here.
And then I'm gonna Fae Flight our face down card and try to block their Stalker. Okay, that's a good target for our cornered crook. Uh, I don't think they're going to be blocking the technician, so I'm going to attack with both here. And then crook, sacrifice the thopter, kill their offender. Because at this point in the game, the repeat offender is actually kind of annoying, right? They can start giving it um, plus one, plus one counters after they suspect it. Another Fester Leech milled. Yeah, so they're just black-red aggro. I mean, if we stabilize, we should be okay unless they have some unforeseen bomb. <clears throat> It's a pretty good draw. We just attack with the crook. I mean, this is not a great draw, but it's better than a land. <laughs> and it can deal some damage out of nowhere. Sure, that's fine. I think I just take this hit. There's no need for me to flip my face down right now. That's a really good draw too, holy smokes. So can't quite kill him since they did opt to block there. Let's just make three one ones then. Because I might have been able to kill him with fuss if they decided not to block at all. Also got to mill two lands, that's fantastic. Okay. Sure. <laughs> 36! <laughs> That's funny. Uh, does that win? They're at 4. That is really close to winning if I attack with everything, right? Wow, that's super close to winning. Because they would need to block all of my non-flyer creatures. Hmm. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is just go red herring and pass. That way, if they have a way to give the Mortipede the lifelink, I can block and then sacrifice the Herring to deny them lifelink. That's fine. Well, that'll allow us to have a 4-4 afterwards. Oh, I don't know why I played that pre-combat. That was bad. Uh, and we're going to pass here. So now we have lethal, but I can also make uh, my clue a 4-4 flyer. All right, and that should be the game. Nice. Phew! Oh, they messed up. In fact, we don't even need to show them the offender at large now. They're just dead to me flipping the uh, 
the pyrotechnic and attacking in the air because that's going to enter back tapped. GG. Woof. Nice. All right, we were able to stabilize there from their initial pressure and they made a couple of mistakes. Not much of a sideboard to have. I think we just run it back. Okay. Good first game for us. Off to game number two. <clears throat> No blue source, got a mulligan that one. Okay, a little bit land heavy, but it's not bad. Exit actually pretty good. There's their defender. I think I'm gonna bin that or just looking for creatures or removal, and that's not like the real removal I'm looking for. Oh, if their turn is just spent leveling that offender up, I'm pretty pleased about that scenario as well then. In fact, we might be able to race them now instead, because they didn't uh, develop more to the board there on turn three. Like next turn I can flip up my Gadgeteer plus bounce something, if they just play like their Mortipede or whatever. It's also fine, I will attack with both. They no block, I'm gonna go with the satchel. I think if they had the orangutan, they would have already killed the automaton. But maybe they were sandbagging it. Okay. So, I think that was a sandbag. Good on their part. Since they know I have more relevant targets. Let's, I think, keep racing here. Yeah, let's flip this up, hit them for one extra damage, put them to nine, and then play out our phoenix after the fact. It has enough fuel to uh, return. Because they use the ability of the offender, it cannot block, so they actually have fewer blockers than it would seem, right? Sure. Okay, you may have it be, no longer become suspected. They turned off the suspect. We do get to still bring back our phoenix, but... They have to give lifelink here, otherwise oh, they're just dead on board. This is 9 damage. I just go to combat, right? Okay, maybe they miscounted, maybe they were off it, I don't know. Either way, our deck did its thing, and uh, <laughs> nice quick round one there for us. Versus the red-black aggro. Off to round two. Match numero dos will be on the play here. Oh. Okay, this is one of those hands that if we draw a third land on time, we are looking great. And if we don't, we're very sad. Okay, well, now we're going to play the Automaton instead of the Codebreaker. I was going to push damage, but yeah, we need to, need to find that third land. Thank God, okay. Won't be greedy. Won't ask for specifically an island, although that would be great. Third mountain was fine for now. Wow. Three mana, still no plays from our opponent. I guess they could have the No Witnesses Wrath, but I'm not going to play around that in game one. Four mana pass. At this point, I think we probably just sit back. 
If they're planning on just making haunch tokens, that's great. Okay, love it. And I'll just go double flip here. Get him for six, make a couple one ones. That is more than enough pressure. Killer Among Us is very good. Although, that being said, it's really weak defensively overall. Like, I'm going to play Red Herring here. I'm going to attack with everything. The Killer Among Us only can target an attacking token. So for right now, they just have 411 blockers. So clearly their choice was going to be either the human or the merfolk. But now you think about it. In order to turn that creature into a 4-4, they have to attack me when they're already so far behind, you know? Yeah, they're just they're just offering the trade-off. They're like, okay, yeah, I need to do this. I think that's probably right. Don't get me wrong, this is like the rare scenario where Killer Among Us is really weak. If you're ahead or um, the board state is even, then yes, the card is insane. Yeah, see, they're just sacrificing it for the YOLOs. <laughs> now, again, the question is, do I want to run out another creature? And I think that's fine. Still hoping they don't have Wrath, but if they had it, right, they would have probably fired it off earlier. Is this a detective? Goblin Rogue. Two, four, gain a couple life. Plus the Eve. That's fine. Uh, we can go Drone Smith. Attack. Notably, I cannot burden of proof their inspector because it has a 1 1 counter on it. So if I burden of proof, it would still be a 2-2 with reach, which would still eat one of my flyers. Watchdog. Again, another card that's really, really bad when you're behind. Um, how many instant sorceries do we have? One? I guess I'm just going to herring again and attack with all. Go fishy fishy. Damn, they blocked the morph. Or the disguise, rather. Okay, so they'll go to one here. But I still have lethal myriad ways. I was kind of hoping they wouldn't block my face down. Sure. It's possible I shouldn't have attacked with my face down creature. Like, they are stable here, and I have to attack with these herring. In fact, what I probably do is sacrifice the herring end of turn if they have, yeah, any kind of stabilization. Because I win if I just find a way to get rid of their inspector. This doesn't give Vigilance to other creatures, right? Just itself. So things we're looking for... Um, I guess one of our satchels would be really good. Oh, they're going to punch my flyer too? Oh no. Yikes. Okay, I am going to sack one of the herring in response and try to find something then. That's incredibly bad. <laughs> Alright, I go to 15. We are going to need to find something here. Wow. 
And just like that, I think we're dead. I don't have a shock in my deck. Oh, I have Pyrotechnic Performer. So if we can rip Performer, we still win. Assuming I'm not dead to one extra point of damage here. <laughs> so my question is, I wonder, had I not attacked with the Fugitive Codebreaker, would I have won that game? I would have drawn three lands. I guess it would have depended on... Um, what the next few cards were afterwards, damn. Seems like maybe I got a little bit unlucky there. But maybe I played a little bit too aggressive as well. Good beats. Go next. Alright, let's go on to game two. Beyond the play. Uh, obviously, this could come back to bite me, but I don't think I can mulligan that. Rip a herring off the top would be fantastic. Just a bounce spell. I mean, not terrible, but not what we wanted. Versus green-white, I think it's pretty safe to just run out the phoenix. Um, and yeah, I think bouncing, that's actually fine. Given our plan is to tap out and we want to dig for spells. Plus, let's set some back a little bit. Yep, they're just going to recast it. I'm alright with that. And the haunch. So if they have their bite this turn, they can get rid of my phoenix. That is not a bite though. Do they? Uh, no, punch doesn't work either. Okay. Go Herring and Smash. And that gives us the fourth mana cost in our graveyard for Phoenix now. There's their killer among us. Nice. Alright, so we get to sack a clue, make a 1 1 end of turn here. I'm going to go with the weapon face down and then plan on killing them in the air next turn. This way we get to hold up Fey Flight as well if they have like a makeshift binding for my Phoenix. I wonder which one is their killer. Could it be the only creature they're attacking with? Hmm, their inspector again, a little bit annoying. So I don't know if I can kill them anymore. Yeah, I'm a little bit short of lethal, I think. Let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, 
9, 10 maybe damage. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I mean, I guess a pretty good play here is probably just a fender on my Phoenix and attack for 5 in the air. Then flipped weapon plus fuss next turn is lethal if they use their mana and don't leave a paunch. I think we do offer the trade, and if they want to use a trick, that's fine. Come on, tap out for something irrelevant. That is perfect. That should be lethal, right? Oh, we can do it any number of ways. We can just Fey Flight this thing up and attack all. So no matter how they block, they die there. Okay, we will take game number two. And yeah, let's just go to third and final game. Let's get them good. Round two, game three versus the green, white, go wide. We will be on the draw this time. Hand looks good though. Yeah, good chance we just use the um, unauthorized exit as a tempo play on turn our turn two. If they play anything that I can bounce. Um, given that they didn't play anything here, I like running out our three two on turn two. Uh, two. The guess is they're probably going to play a disguise creature this turn, but that's okay. Oh man, they bricked. Oh yikes, that's brutal. Okay, well. Game might be over pretty quickly then. And the first thing they play, we can like bounce. Ah. That sucks. Not really much of a game there. But I guess they kept a really sketchy hand and it didn't pay off. Like I kept a sketchy hand too and I did get lucky in that second game or whatever. Okay, 2-0. Oh. Let's see if we can get that 3-0 oh trophy. Step one, be on the play. Step two. This is not much of a curve out, but I'm going to keep it. Two harried drone smith is kind of cute, and odds are I'm probably going to draw something to do in the first couple turns, right? Two draw steps. I mean, maybe not odds are, but... <laughs> Yeah, see? I drew a land to play. That's something to do. A little bit scared that uh, we're going to find ourselves fighting a doppelgang or a Vanifar versus blue-green. That is perfect. Wow. That is one of the cards we were hoping to draw with our uh, satchel. Rather, with our drone smiths. Awkwardly, the drone smith thopters are made at the beginning of combat, so I can't really equip the uh, equip the uh, equipment to them. Jeez, man, I'm drawing very well. 
This is three to flip, right? Yeah, two to equip, three to flip. You have to assume one of those is a gardener. Make sure I hold the full priority. Gardens, indeed. All right. Free Thopters every turn. No blocks. Love it. Spending their turn just flipping that is really good for us, I think. Um, let's go like this. They double block. Great. I'll just flip it. I just wanted to see if they blocked it all. And then, do I play out the Phoenix? I guess I do, even though we don't have anything in our graveyard. It might be a little bit of time before we do get anything in our graveyard, so. But I'm on a fast clock here. They can sack their clue, draw a card. It's fine. We still want a two turn clock, so let's chump five of the damage. Yeah, combat. Seven in the air, eight in the air, rather. Then we go. Detective pass. I don't need to make a token right now, because we have the clue we can sack first. Oh, I did hold priority, no uh, notably. For some reason, I thought I wasn't going to do that. I think it's actually better for us to chump with our Technician. It puts a 4 in the graveyard for Phoenix, but it keeps all of our Flyers alive, most importantly. Oh, wow. Jeez. Okay, that's annoying. So they're going to gain 6 and go to 11, plus they have a 6-6 six, six reach now. Sheesh. Brutal, actually. Um, We're going to play a face down offender and make another 1-1. One, one. They're going to take minimum 6 here. Yeah. Gosh, if they go land doppelgang, <laughs> they copy Glint Weaver and something else and we're just immediately dead. Let's hope they don't have it, huh?
You just know they have it in their deck somewhere, though. I mean, even if they only doppelgang one Glint Weaver, that's still really problematic for us. Oh, well, there's the eighth land. All right. Do you have it? I think I just block Crocodile if they attack like this. And sure, I die to Fanatical or I die to Leg Up. There are a lot of things I die to there, but I think we're playing to win, right? Okay, that's not super relevant. How many instants and sorceries are in my graveyard? Zero. I have eight mana. I mean, I have to go for the kill, right? They have ice out or ice cold or whatever. Son of a biscuit, they do. Okay. I can put them to one here, most likely. Because they would block everything but the top. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's see. No, they would... Two, four, six. Yeah, they would let through two thopters, and then I could pump it to a four. Wait, no. Would they pump the two? Would they block? Yeah, no, they, I have three ground creatures, three flyers, so they have three non-spider ground creature blockers. Damn, I think I'm going to be one short. So just attack with the two small flyers that are dying anyways then. All right. Any pump kills me because the courier can be unblockable this turn. Okay, there's the unblockable on the courier, but they still need to find a pump effect for it. Man, this is a tight game. I'm guessing I'm not dead. Because they haven't done it yet. Or if I am dead, they're slow rolling me. <laughs> okay, that doesn't kill me. So block six, block five, two, three on two, two, then trade and jump, go to one. Move the equipment, GG. Holy smokes. <laughs> So 
so they have some fat. But actually, I didn't see anything too problematic to deal with. Yeah, I think I'm just going to run it back. All right, up a game in the finals. Can he convert? All right, let's do it to it, baby. The double satchel hand, but that's a mulligan. Oh, yeah. Okay, this is going to need to be a hand that draws well because it certainly isn't a good opening one. The rope a dope. Turn to analyst. Ooh, courier. I, think I probably should bounce that end of turn. It's good. All right. Now the rope does give reach, uh, but if they have to spend their turn equipping, we're okay with that, right? They could bite it this turn if they have bite. Oh, they do. My poor Phoenix gone forever. <sighs> Our hope here is going to be that uh, bother making three one ones is good enough. No equip. Ooh, hello. Guess I'm gonna attack then. So I'm not blocking. Honestly, I think just hitting them for five is probably fine. Oh wait, it's seven. Why did I think this said other creature? Huh, okay, well, the more you learn, the more you know. I'm just concerned that they passed with two mana open, they didn't equip, which means they could have unreasonable doubt in their hand. Or whatever, reasonable doubt in their hand. So I think we want to try to play around it, and hitting them like that is still really nice. Discarding out cold. So they're just going to equip their analyst, I suppose. Oh, this is three to equip. Oh, what the heck? Rope is worse than I thought. So I guess they might not have a counter in their hand. I still think we're probably going to play out the Crime Novelist now instead of the Satchel. But now I'm of the belief that it's not entirely necessary or true that they have the counter. If they had that last turn, they would have cast it. End of my turn. I don't know. I got a small inkling they could still have reasonable doubt. Alright, so Courier becomes unblockable and they can attack with the Analyst. I'm going to cast the Burden of Proof on their Analyst before blockers are declared in case it is a counter or in case they have like the um, Alibi card.
Remember, this says Detective U Control. They might have a second out cold here that they're considering casting now. All right, so this actually punished me a little bit for doing that trick beforehand, but I think it was right. Hmm. That courier is now problematic. So in order to attack with their analyst this turn, they have to draw a card. Yeah, so we're dead in two turns. So I need to draw something. Because <sighs> they load up on the courier, attack for six, and the next turn they can make it unblockable. Jace? Wait, what? Jace is in this format? That's hilarious. Oh, I should be tapping more blue because I'm floating red. One more chance. That does not do it because there's nothing I can do with a single red, so. Right, we die to the courier. What the hell is Jace doing? Double out cold is kind of problematic if we don't have our go wide plan enabled. A second Fey Flight might versus them might not be bad. Over this Burden of Proof. Because they also have equipment encounters, which Burden of Proof is a lot worse versus. So I think I'm just going to go uber aggro mode. We have the double herring, double Fey Flight, a bunch of gadgeteers. We just need to have a good opener. We haven't had any good openers, really. Perfect. Excellent opening hand. Needs to find a trick or two, ideally. Oh, this is a really good curve out. This could be a game where Red Herring deals upwards of six plus damage, you know? You ready to get fished? It's fish time. Good, no counter, just another deduce. Pass? That's really good for us. This is a little bit awkward, as it does make sense to flip my gadgeteer because if I do I'd get an artifact a good artifact to sacrifice to crook okay now I expect they did have that on the previous game and I can just sacrifice herring now to the uh, to the crook and effectively turn the herring into a bolt so this works out Come on, keep the pressure. Keep the pressure. Any interactive spell here would be amazing. Before they can stabilize, before they can glint weaver me. We know they have two out cold in their deck, too. This is not a bad turn for them to out cold.
Analyst plus out cold, maybe. Oh, Desperation plays. I like that. All right, ship it all. Flip my hand, draw three cards. Eh, not good, not bad. I guess the performer is actually pretty good, especially if we can find another one of our disguised creatures. Don't you, don't you dare glint weaver me. I'm not ready for it. Okay. I can deal with that. They might still have the Glint Weaver in their hand, and if they do, we're still really looking bad. Okay, that's not too bad. And that triggers on 8, right? Yeah, so I don't even think they can attack here. We have lethal. We're going to go for it. All right, flip it up. That's lethal. Let's go. Woo. Uh, I think we would have lost that game had they found their Glint Weaver. Fortunately, we were able to pressure them a ton, and they did not find their Glint Weaver that game. And that, my friends, is a delicious 3-0. Oh, deck was great. Again, not really super bomby. I had the Lamplight Phoenix, and... Well, that was really my best rare. The Performer was good, but it's not really a rare quality, so... You can win without rares, it's just a lot harder. Remember during the draft, I passed back-to-back -back Ezrams in pack 3... And that's just going to be the case sometimes, right? There are so many rares that get opened. Um, sometimes you're going to see a lot of good ones go around. But good stuff. Double, double uh, satchel, triple technician, and we'll take it. So thanks for watching. We'll see you back next time. Bye-bye.